Today's feast is one that we only celebrate every few years on a Sunday, and it commemorates what might seem a rather obscure event which took place in the 4th century after Christ, the consecration of the Basilica of St. John Lateran in Rome. For many visitors to Rome, St. Peter's is no doubt the number one stop on their itinerary. They probably assume that it has always been the most important church in Rome. In fact, for many centuries, the Lateran was the residence of the Pope and is still regarded as the mother church of the city and indeed of the whole Western church. For the first 300 years after Christ's resurrection, the Christian faith lived in a very uneasy relationship not just with the Jewish authorities, but increasingly with the Roman Empire. And Christians were subject to frequent bouts of persecution, often severe. It would have been quite out of the question in those 300 years to build large and publicly visible churches. But then in the year 312, everything began to change. The newly elected Emperor, Constantine, had a vision which led him, first of all, to tolerate and later to embrace actively the Christian faith. Slowly the Church became the dominant force in the newly emerging continent of Europe. Constantine's wife gave some of her family's land, on which the palace and the Church of the Lateran was built. And it's the consecration of that church which we mark today. It's a feast that invites us to reflect on the significance of our church buildings, and indeed on ourselves as God's building the church. And in fact, there's something of a tension in our faith between these two realities. On the one hand, the coming of Christ on earth God in human form inevitably meant that religious buildings were not as important as before. As the Gospel reading, the very dramatic reading we heard, makes clear for the Jewish people, the temple was everything. The temple was the place where God dwelt. How much significance still attaches to that place, the site of the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, now, of course, the site of a mosque. We're all aware it's been in the news even this very week. Yet for us as Christians, Christ himself is the true temple. It's his body that is inhabited fully by the Holy Spirit. And since one of the titles of the church is the mystical body of Christ, we too, as St. Paul tells us in the second reading, we too are God's temple, living stones in the house which makes up his church. So at first sight it might appear that religious buildings since the coming of Christ are of little or no importance. And indeed for some Christians they are not. You go into a typical Baptist or free church or Pentecostal church, for example, it probably looked just like any other hall deliberately so, as if to emphasize that it's the people who worship, not the building, that makes the church. In the early centuries, because of the persecution, Christians usually worshipped in each other's houses, as they still do, of course, today in places where they're persecuted. And in more recent times, before it became possible to build a church, Mass was often celebrated in our own country in very ordinary venues. One parish I served in had begun life with mass celebrated regularly in the local pub before it became possible to build a church. And yet by some deep instinct, as soon as it became possible for Christians to build the churches from the 4th century onwards, they lavished great care on them. The Lateran Basilica itself has been destroyed several times in its history by fire or earthquakes, but each time it's been rebuilt with enormous devotion. 
here in St. Mary of the Angels, we're fortunate to have a beautiful church, which in recent years has been restored by Father Allen, my predecessor, and the parish with painstaking attention to detail, so that everyone who comes into the church remarks how attractive and uplifting this building is. And it's in a place like this that we begin to understand that Although it's true, we, the Christian people, are indeed the church, the temple of the living God. Nevertheless, the building in which we worship is of great importance too. Because we're not apprentice angels. We're creatures of body and spirit in a unity. The way you treat your own body has an effect on your soul. Think how irritable you can be if you haven't eaten properly or had enough sleep. And so too, the, the care with which we look after our church buildings has a big effect on our spiritual worship, which is a good opportunity for me to thank all those who help to keep our church so beautiful, the cleaners, those who look after the sacristy, change the light bulbs, arrange flowers, these are highly important ministries in the church. Even if they're often unnoticed and seem to be humble ones, they do an immense amount of good which is often unknown to those who perform them. Pope St. John Paul II put all this in a wonderful sentence which I leave with you. You can find it also in the newsletter this week under the fourth for the week. And it's a good opportunity also for me to mention that at the request of some parishioners, my homilies are also to be found on the parish website. So you can find the quotation there as well. If you're really keen, some of them are even to be found on YouTube, thanks to one of our technical uh, parishioners. Using the Greek word cosmos, which originally means something both harmonious and beautiful, hence our English word for cosmetic. Pope John Paul says this, The beauty and harmony of churches, destined to render praise to God, invite us human beings too, so limited and sinful, to convert ourselves to form a cosmos, a well-ordered construction, in close communion with Jesus, who is 